Good afternoon. It's Tuesday, November 22nd, 2011. I'm Jamie Chadwick with your Erner Berry Market Report, sponsored by NAMP's new line of English Spanish meat cup posters, now larger and fully laminated. Before we get to the markets today, we'd like to let our viewers know that Ernerberry will be closed this week on Thursday and Friday in observance of the Thanksgiving holiday. And stay tuned today for a special egg report from Rick Brown, who's seeing something going on in the egg market that he's never seen before in his 28 years of reporting at Erner Berry. Now let's take a look at what's happening on foodmarket.com. Hormel Food Corp fiscal fourth quarter profit fell 3% as sales at its grocery product segment declined. The food processing company also announced its 46th consecutive annual dividend increase. You can get more on this story and other news from the center of the plate at foodmarket.com. Now let's check out the markets. Looking at poultry trade activity in the chicken market is seasonally slow today early on. Logistics are a major factor in the scenario with most buyers looking to secure product for post Thanksgiving ship dates. Wings continue to be the most sought after item even at this late point on the calendar with availability being extremely limited. Movement on cutlets and tenders is irregular at best, although supplies are certainly not overly abundant. Like meat and thigh meat are moving at a steady pace while wogs and whole birds are balanced overall. Talking turkey with Thanksgiving just days away, business patterns in the industry are negligible. There's more paperwork and 2012 contract-oriented activity taking place than anything else. Parts are tight all around, but that being said, the holiday disruption and associated downtime will result in a few items being boxed and frozen. Whole body turkeys are very well cleared. Processors are not expecting to have much in the way of freezer inventories available for December orders and reflect this by asking prices that are steady to only slightly lower. This is true for fresh turkeys as well as frozen. Moving over to red meats, the box beef industry participants are reporting fairly quiet activity at the opening of the trading day. Most asking prices for quick ship opportunity are collected at steady money, with the noted exception of same additional advances seen for choice ribs. Erner Berry's weekly cattle slaughter poll taken yesterday has the industry looking for a holiday-shortened 561,000 head kill. Looking at pork, the green meat complex is expected to track sideways today as a limited amount of product traded has been able to do so at generally steady money. Potential weakness in hams, bellies and trim is limited due to the reduced production this week. Similarly, in the retail complex, steady trade is anticipated to continue as product appears to clear relatively easy at current levels. Activity has historically been lackluster at best during the week of Thanksgiving, and this year seems on par with past years throughout much of the pork market. Finally, let's check out that special report about what's happening in the egg market. Here's Brian Moscageri and Rick Brown. Hi, good afternoon guys. I'm Brian Moscageri here with Rick Brown. Here to take a quick look at what happened pre-Thanksgiving in our um, fourth quarter market of the egg market. Thanks for taking a little time out of your um, busy day to talk no with problem, us, Rick. Brian. This is my first time going through the November market pre-Thanksgiving. Is this typical of what you guys historically see? No, Brian, I'll tell you what. I've been quoting the egg market at Erna Barry for going on 28 years. And I got to tell you, this is the flattest market we've ever seen during a Thanksgiving period. Okay, uh, from September 28th to today, so that's just about two full months, the market advanced by one cent. We went from $1.28 to $1.29, and that was it. Very, very unusual. I think it's probably the first time in my career that we saw a completely flat market, really for the whole Thanksgiving season. Right, now what caused that? Well, you know, there, there were a number of things that, that I think were factors in contributing to this flat market. First off, the August market, was one of the highest markets we've seen on record. Okay, it averaged Midwest large, averaged about a dollar thirty-five, so very, very high. And then September, we had a decline in September, went down to about a dollar twenty-one. But that was still about eight cents over the five-year average for September. Mm -hmm. So still a very, a very you know high market. Uh, it's not to say that it was the most profitable market because of grain but relatively speaking, it was a very high market. So both the producers and the retailers made certain assumptions about the fourth quarter. They both figured that the fourth quarter was going to be very, very high. Now, what were some of the factors that kind of gave them that, that idea and what well, kept the market I mean, low? Well, I mean, looking at, at August, 
at how high it was, um, and the demand seemed to be pretty good. They had a decline in September. I mean, they just made these assumptions, okay? But what, what did they do with those assumptions? That's really the important question mm -hmm. here. And the producer, basically the producer looked at his flock and said, you know what, I am going to keep these birds in production just about as long as I possibly can, okay? And so I think they did that. And if you looked at the supply of jumbos and the weak position of jumbos, I think that's very evidence. You know, that's the evidence that they did indeed hold on to those birds. Okay, the retailer, on the other hand, you know, they're saying to themselves, all right, the market's going to be high in the fourth quarter. What should I do? All right. They were fearful uh, of featuring, okay, for the Thanksgiving market, for the baking season. So they did very, very little of it. So you had two things sort of at odds with each other. You had relatively high production, and then you had a lack of feature activity, which kept, kept consumption really fairly low. Okay, so those two things do not work well together, and I think that's why we saw a very flat market for the Thanksgiving season mm -hmm. this year. Now, we only have one month left of the year in the fourth quarter. We're approaching the Christmas season. What can we come to expect for the rest of the year? Well, you know, historically speaking, when you compare the November market to the December market, it's not unusual at all for the December market to be a, a little bit lower, simply because you know the seasons are, are, are ending, the breaker is offering additional product into the consumer market. Okay, so we do see a, a little bit extra supply in December than we do in November. But this November has been very, very unusual. Okay, a lot of things going on in the marketplace. So December is really an unknown. Uh, will the producers reduce their flock sizes uh, now uh, instead of waiting into December or, or January or will the retailers really get aggressive and start to feature because we have had a very flat market here. Mm -hmm. So you know we'll have to wait and see um, but certainly it'll be uh, it'll be interesting going forward as always. Great. Well thanks for that Rick. Hope you have a happy Thanksgiving. Yeah happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> <Ryan>. <laughs> thanks. And from all of us at Erner Berry hope you guys have a th happy Thanksgiving and thanks for watching. That wraps up Erner Berry's Market Report, brought to you today by NAMP's new line of English-Spanish meat cup posters. Featuring nine new designs of clear, crisp color images of pork, veal, lamb, and beef cuts, now in a larger and fully laminated display. Contact Erner Berry today to order your set of NAMP's meat cup posters and ask about the new five-poster beef cut series, featuring in-depth displays of sirloin, rib, round loin, and chuck cuts. Visit us online at shop.namp.com or give us a call at 800-932-0617.